to the Kent Lap Podcast. So is would you not think then that the best antidote to this Bible Belt Christianity, which is not just in the Bible Belt, I mean, it's all over, this cultural Christianity that's basically dead, mm-hmm. um, what it needs is not so much for those people to just stop going to church or to just drop, you know, whatever semblance of the Christian faith they have at this point. Um, it, it doesn't need them to essentially leave the faith altogether. It needs revival. Right, that's what I'm saying. We need a sweeping, right. powerful, transforming revival. Mm-hmm. I mean, it happened in in uh, 1740 yeah. in New England. Right. It happened in the, what was it, the 60s, the Jesus movement in California. That's right. Like, it... it it can happen again, but I don't. I have not. I'm 12, 35 years old, and I have not personally witnessed a rampant citywide, statewide, countrywide revival where conversations shift, where there's just conversions, where there's a like. Um, I mean, it's it's happening. To, in, it's, I mean, there's conversions every day, of course, mm. uh, all around us. But this this idea of a citywide. Mm. Or a countrywide revival, I've not seen it. So part yeah. of it, part of in my mind, I have this this doubt in the back. Like, could it couldn't happen? Can yeah. it actually happen? Like, I understand it happened in the past, right? But could it ever happen again? Will it ever happen again? Um, but man, that's that's one of the best things we should be agitating for right now. Yeah, and I think that's what the Reformation was. It was revival, and I think that's what Puritanism was. It was revival. It was saying the striving for the purity of the church is revival. Uh, I, I can't see it any other way. When you're striving for the church to be the church as God has intended the church to be, and you begin to let loose of all of these other exterior, you know, kind of uh, third level, fourth level kind of trappings, it, it begins to kind of get the church back to saying, this is about Jesus and about people being transformed in Christ. It's about people being the people of God who have been redeemed by God, um, living as the people of God for the glory of God. And I think that's really, really important to remember during this day. So every revival has always had those kinds of impulse. It's never, it's rarely been, as, I mean, yes, there's been certainly mass conversions, but I think mass conversions came as a result of unconverted people, and I, frankly, even mm-hmm. unconverted pastors, as some of the Puritans would right. say, oh, yeah. who actually yeah. got saved and started preaching the real gospel. Yes. When they become convinced of the gospel, all of a sudden... Other people become convinced of the gospel. Yes. Right? Yes. Right. Yep. So. Well, John and Charles Wesley, great Amen. examples of that. Right. Both of those guys self-admittedly were preaching for some time before they right. were converted. Right. Um, and uh, they weren't seeing fruit. Right. So uh, as well, I guess we shouldn't expect to see fruit <laughs> if we're preaching the gospel message and we're right. not converted. Right. Um, how do you... How do you... Um, how do you work towards revival <laughs> <laughs> as lead pastor of your church? Personally, or or maybe corporately, or how, how do you work towards revival? Well, one of the books that's been helpful for me, and I honestly cannot remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it was by Jonathan Edwards when he said, you know, what what is and what necessarily is not the work of the Spirit kind of thing. And, and he, he lists also, I forget the name of the book. Something about the affections, religious yeah. affections, right? Yeah. Was that yeah, an article or a book? It is, but there was a small sliver of it that he released, oh, okay. and they released of his, and I'm, I'm trying to think of the name of it, but it'll hit me here maybe a little bit later. But he just kind of outlines like what is evidence of the work of spirit and what is not evidence, not mm-hmm. necessarily evidence of the work of spirit. And I think one thing that, that I try to remind myself is, you know, again, we should not think simply because we've got a, a big, full building of people is an evidence of the work of the Spirit. Um, on the other hand, we should not think that a smaller church that's faithful showing up and seeing under the, the normal, uh, the uh, average, everyday means of grace under the preaching of the Word, the gathering with the body is not an evidence of grace, not an evidence of the Spirit. So, one, try not to put a whole lot of weight on externals, mm-hmm. because some of those things can be very deceiving. Now, again, some some small churches could very well be an indication that the Spirit's not here and the Spirit's mm-hmm. not working. So I think there's, you know, and we're not we're not privy to, this, you know, He doesn't send out a newsletter. Holy Spirit does not send out a newsletter every week going, this is where I'm working this week. Right. Um, yep. But so I think for me, how do I, how do I pursue revival is as much as I'm able, like I, when I'm preaching sun, week in, week out, like I, the one thing I want to make sure I'm doing or at least pursuing, is saying, have I been moved 
by this text. God, are you moving through my life in that way? Um, I know a lot of pastors say that, and I've said that in a very superficial way myself, but even more recently going, God, before I come and give this product, if you want to use that terminology mm-hmm. to the people, like, have I been moved by your word? Mm-hmm. And and if not, move me. Mm-hmm. Move me or move me out of the way, I guess is right. another way you might want to look at, which is a very um, concerning prayer to pray, if you yes. actually mean that. Um, move me out of the way if I'm not being moved yeah. um, by your word. And I think there is, and, and, and listen, there's a guy, um, R. Scott Clark, again, probably one of those cantankerous, you know, Presbyterians out there who limits his, narrows his definition of what it means to be reformed, but that's neither, neither here nor there. Um, he, he just really distinguishes between piety and pietism. Mm. Pietism is, is more focused on the externals, mm-hmm. and piety is more about what we are, what, what we're doing that puts our eyes on Jesus. Yes. So there's a difference. Pietism is more of like, it's focused on what you're doing. Yes. And rather than piety is more of what you're doing and it's means to lead you to see Jesus. Yes. And so I, I just trying to, I mean, I mean, it's, it's for some people, they, it, it, it seems becomes a misnomer, but I, I want to gather with the church because it is part of pursuing revival. Yes. I think I want to be under preaching because it is about pursuing revival. Um, I want to be in the Word daily, in prayer daily, because it is about pursuing revival. Mm -hmm. And so those are markers. I I shouldn't necessarily say those things are evidences of the Spirit, but I should Mm -hmm. never never say that they're not. And even if I don't see the fruit that I want to see. Yes. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I think one of the... One of the things that I want to experience in my lifetime, uh, which I have a couple years left, Lord willing, <laughs> but it's this idea yeah. of conversations in a city, wholesale conversations changing. Right. In you know the forties, you would you you could not go to a bar without hearing conversations about Jesus. Right. Business meetings. It would trickle in mm-hmm. uh, town hall meetings, right. like it. The conversation at a secular, wholesale societal level changed. That's right. Um, and uh, you know, I, I want to hear. I want to be able to walk down Broadway just because Nashville is our city. Right. Walk down Broadway, and yeah, let's keep the music pumping. Yeah, I don't care. Music is fantastic. A lot of it is. It's, it's great. In addition to the music. I want to be able to overhear multiple conversations working my way from Bridgestone down to the river about Jesus and God right. and, and the Holy Bible and things of things of that nature. And um, you know, I I just the idea that at a societal level conversations can shift mm-hmm. because of revival, that um, man, that's that's something that uh, would be worth, you know, spending your life towards. Well, and I think, you know, um really exploring going over to the more continental reformed thinkers like the Dutch reformed, you know, you, you have this mentality of Christ and everything, right? Mm-hmm. It is not, there's not one square inch of, you know, Abraham Kuyper, not one square inch under heaven that Jesus doesn't say it's mine, you know, uh, butchering that quote, mm-hmm. but I think everyone knows what I'm talking about. Most people would. And I think that's what you're espousing is the fact that when we begin to be conscientiously aware of the fact that everything is Christ and everything, everything we need to bring Christ into everything as God's people, yes. we begin to say that's there, that's the only way revival takes shape. And you start seeing city-wide and, and regional-wide and maybe even nationwide types yes. of revivals. 